We will sing this morning the Arunadaya Kirtan. It's a morning song. O Dilo Aruna Purabhapagi Dvijamani Goramani Jage O Dilo Aruna Purabhapagi Dui jamani gora mani jage. Bakata samuha loela sate jela nagara braje. Tatae tatae pajala ko gana gana tahe jajeraro preme dala dala sonaranga. Charaninu Purabhaje Mukunda Madhava Yadavahari Bolena Bolo Revandana Bore Michi nida vase jelare rati diva shashari rasaje. E manadur laba manavade. Payati koro bhavana keho Ebe na bhajile yashoda suta Charani pori belaje Odi tatapana hoile asta Dina jelo boile hoi bebi asta Tabe te noe be ala sa hoi Jivana Anitya Janahasan Tahinana Vidavita 
Namashaya kore yatani to me Taka panaka jai Namashaya Dapat tapasaya ko maduranam Tivera kalyana sadhana kam Jagate ase madhuranam Avidyati mirata pana rupe Rigogane biraje Krishna nam shuddha kori apan Yura bhakati vinoda pran Nama bina kichu nahi koara Jago, Jago, Gora Chanda Pole Kotani Maya Pisha Chira Baji Bopoliya Eche Samsara Bithare Bulliya Rohile Tumi Abhijyara Tomare loe te ami, hai nu avatara. Ami bina bandu ar, ke ache Eni chi o shadi maya na shi para lagi <laughs> oh, 
Bakati Vinoda Prabhu Charane Pareya Se Hare Nama Mantra Jeep Jago, Jeep Jago, Gora Chanda Pole. Kota Nidra, Jaya Maya, Pisha Chira Kore. Jaya Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Nittai Gaur Haribo, 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 Nittai Gaur Haribo. So we're so reading we're Nectar reading of Instruction. instruction. We're on text, text number two. two. Text, text number, number two. two. You'll remember the verse, right? Good. Atyahara prayashascha Prajaupo niyamagraha Jana sangas chaloyamcha Shadbir Bhaktir Vinashyati. One's devotional service is spoiled when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities. One, eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. Two, over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Three, talking unnecessary about mundane subject matters. Four, practicing the scriptures, the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement. Or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. Five, associating with worldly-minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. And six, being greedy for mundane achievements. We're reading the purport. Uh, one should avoid association with Mayavadis who simply blaspheme devotees. Oh, did we read this? Bhakti Kamis, who are influenced in material, ha who are interested in material happiness, Mukti Kamis, who desire liberation, are merging into the existence of the formless absolute Brahman, and Siddhi Kamis, who desire the perfection of mystic yoga practice, are classified as Atyaharis. To associate with such persons is not at all desirable. So we spoke about the importance of association that re reflect the qualities of the people we associate with. 
And if we associate with these kind of people mentioned here, who all have material desires of one kind or another, then it will be harmful for our spiritual progress. Just like some people want mystic powers, they desire mystic perfections to become very light and some to, to become very heavy or prapticity to bring something from far away to make oneself very small. There was a great man, he was named the great Houdini. The great Houdini he had some kind of mystic powers, yoga cities. They could lock him in a box, in a big trunk, and somehow he could come out. He had this, this kind of mystic power. He could make his body so small, he could come out. But, one man, one, man, one uh, devotee, he said that, what is the value of this kind of yoga power? This has already been achieved by technology. By technology, you just some yoga power can walk across water, right? So everybody will come and watch, and he rolls up his dhoti, and he walks across the water. But for five rupees, you can cross the water in the boat. So the value of that yoga is five, u five rupees. He spent years, maybe lifetimes, to get the yoga siddhi. But for five rupees, you can get the same result. In the same way, people have other kinds of yoga powers. They can fly. We can also fly. You go to airport, you get the ticket, you can fly. We can also go through the mountain. You, they build the metro to go through the mountains, right? You go in the trains, you go through the mountains. So the yogis, they spend so much time, so much trouble to get the yoga power. It's already achieved by technology. Prapti Siddhi, Prabhupada said he met the one man. He asked him, what kind of fruit do you like? And Prabhupada said, oh, I like pomegranate. The man said, oh, pomegranates, they have very nice pomegranates in Kabul. Kabul, Afghanistan, right? So the man meditated for a minute, and then next minute a big pomegranate came in his hand. He said, here, take it. So that is Prapti Siddhi. Just like this, the one in Bangalore, he had some kind of yoga powers. He could produce gold watches and things. You know, some kind of CD. But you can go to the shop and buy gold watches as well, you know. What is the value? Whatever the value of the watch is, that's the value of his yoga. So it's not very wonderful that people can do these things. What is more important, the real yoga power, Prabhupada was often asked, people was, would ask him, do you have yoga cities? Prabhupada said, yes. They said, can we see some of your yoga powers? Prabhupada said, you see all these men? He said, they were all meat eaters before. He said, now they are mad in love of God for Krishna. He said, that is my yoga city. So, uh, we, a devotee is not interested in some kind of cheap mystic power. If you display that kind of power to produce gold or to heal the sick, then you will attract these kind of people. You can produce gold, you'll get all the greedy people who want gold. They will become your followers. And if you're sick, then if you can heal the sick, then you'll get so many sick people come to you. They want, you to, they want to be healed. And so, what is the value of that kind of power? You know, people talk about Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus also told the lame man, get up and walk. And the man got up and walked. So, so many lame people will come. They will all ask, please help me, I want to walk. But that is not the real purpose of yoga. The real goal of yoga is to connect to the Supreme. So these people, whether they're bhukti kamis, 
Mukti Kamis or Siddhi Kamis, they all have some material desire. They are not peaceful. Only the devotee is peaceful because he has no material desire. Bukti, Mukti, Siddhi Kami, Sakale, Ashanta, Krishna Bhakti, Niskam, Sa Esha Shanta. Devotee has no material desire. We have desires. Desire for the service of Krishna, not for our own sense gratification. So this is the principle. Uh, desires to expand the mind by perfecting mystic yoga, merging in the existence of Brahman, or attaining whimsical material prosperity are all included within the category of greed. All attempts to acquire such material benefits or so-called spiritual advancement are impediments on the path of Krishna consciousness. We have to understand these things are obstacles, they're impediments on the path of Krishna consciousness. To have material desires are going to take us away from the actual path of pure devotional service. Pure devo what is the definition of pure devotional service? Yes, right. Anya Bilasid, no material desires. No desires for fruit of activity or for liberation. So that is necessary to cultivate the pure devotion. We have to get rid of these kind of desires. Now if we have, what if we have these material desires? How can we remove them? Simply by engaging in devotional service. You simply engage in hearing and chanting and the material desires all fly away. They all go away. Material desires, the material... Re because material desires are there because of ignorance. It is simply out of ignorance that we're desiring temporary material pleasures which are finished with the body. So we want to cultivate the pure desire. Purify the desire. We purify the desire by chanting Hare Krishna. You come in the association of devotees, you chant and dance, you serve Krishna, all the material desires are forgotten. They're left behind. If we fully engage in the Krishna conscious process, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada used to give the example about the wedding party. They're going to the wedding and all the men, people, they all get in the boat. They get in the boat in the evening and they tell the boatman, we have to cross the river tomorrow morning, auspicious time for the marriage. So we have to be there in the morning for the auspicious time to perform the marriage. So they all get in the boat, and the sun sets, and the boatman is rowing the boat. And when they woke up in the morning, when the sun came up, they saw the boat was in the same place. And they were shocked. What? The, and they cursed the boatman, this lazy boatman. He, he must have been sleeping all night. And the boatman said, no, I've been rowing the boat the whole night. And they said, well, why are we still in the same place? And then they found out the rope was still attached to the bank. They had not released the, the, the rope which was anchoring the boat to the side of the river. So in this way, sometimes people perform devotional service, but they keep the material attachment. They don't let go of their material desires. They hold on. So you may be rowing the boat, but you won't go anywhere because we're holding on. We don't let go of the material. We have to let go of the material. 
How to let go of the material? Hold on to the spiritual. Hold on to Krishna. Engage in Krishna's service. Hearing and chanting and dancing and working for Krishna. And we'll forget all about the Maya. It will all be forgotten about. Just simply by engaging in Krishna's service. We will, and we, ex we see, we experience it. People come to Krishna consciousness. They come in the beginning, they come with material desires. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Bajab Jantimam Jnana Sukriti no Arto Jignasur. Right, four kinds of people they come, different reasons. Most people come in distress. Especially in the Western countries, people come in distress. They're very distressed, usually. They come to Krishna consciousness. But in the course of chanting and serving Krishna, they forget all the distress. We got one, one young man one morning. We were outside the temple chanting Japa, and we met this one young man, came by, and he saw us, and he was talking to us. And he said, you know, I just had a big argument with my girlfriend and she threw me out. I have nowhere to go. So we said, oh, come and chant with us. You know, you can, do, you can become a devotee. And we gave him beads and we got him chanting. You know, he was really depressed. His girlfriend had broken with him, lost his girlfriend and everything. But so he, he came and he was chanting and dancing, becoming a devotee. But then after, some, after a, a week, he said, I think I want to go now. I said, why? He said, I'm, I don't feel so d much distressed anymore. The stress was over. And so he said, I want to go find another girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> want to go in more distress, you know. So like that, people sometimes come, they have no money. They come to Krishna consciousness to solve their economic problems. And their devotees are preaching, distributing books. And somebody says, come and work for me. I'll give you a job. And they say, oh, I'll get a job. I had no job. Someone's giving me a job. And they, they, they give up devotional service to go and work for some materialistic karmi. Right? They think... Krishna solved my problem, give me a job. But somebody else, he, he's, in, he's very curious, he has many questions. You get people coming sometimes, they always ask, they will ask many nice questions. You think, wow, the person's really good, he's got so many nice questions. And then after all, he doesn't come anymore. And then you met, met him in the street and said, hey, what happened to you? You're not coming anymore to the temple. He said, yeah, no more questions. And so like that, he was only curious. But if people get knowledge, if they come to the platform of knowledge, then they'll never forget Krishna. They'll never go away from Krishna consciousness. If we get that knowledge, that's very important. That is why every day we have to have these programs, classes, we have to hear. And that's why we have to read the books also. Because if we get that knowledge, then we will never become bewildered again by the material energy. And Krishna says, the one who has knowledge, he is the best of the four kinds of people who come. The one who is in knowledge of him, he is the best. He's considered the best. But do we make advancement very quick by knowledge? Do you make advancement quickly by knowledge? No. Right? What does Krishna say? Bahunam gyanmanam ante. Yeah, by knowledge takes many births.
right? It can take many lifetimes by knowledge to come to perfection. But by devotion, very quickly you can achieve perfection. Doesn't take any time at all. Coming to Krishna consciousness simply by devotion, you can make advancement very quickly. You go to the other people, you go to the Astanga Yoga people, and learn Astanga Yoga, whoa, you will suffer. <laughs> it takes a long time to get anywhere. And so much pain, all the pain, sit, press the nose, all trouble and all very slow to progress but by devotion very quickly you can get perfection very quick and people see sometimes somebody becomes a devotee before the be before becoming a devotee they were completely karmi sinful so many bad habits and then they become a devotee and they completely transform. People are amazed that, well, be, is this that devote, that person, is that him? Totally different. They become devotees. They, they leave behind all the bad habits. And they become completely absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So it doesn't, it doesn't take hardly any time. Krishna consciousness is like the lift, right? You want to go to the top floor? We go in the lift, right? If you walk up the stairs, or you get to the third floor, oh, they're serving prasadam. I'll just take prasadam, right? <laughs> you don't go to the top floor because prasadam's being served. So. And then you go to the next floor and you meet somebody else. You may never get to the top. So like that. But so many things to deviate us, to distract us. So we have to be fixed. So Krishna consciousness, to understand the importance of devotion and how devotion is superior to all other processes. Okay, Prabhupada writes, Modern warfare waged between capitalists and communists is due to their avoiding the advice of Srila Rupa Goswami regarding Atyahara. Modern capitalists accumulate more wealth than necessary, and the communists, envious of their prosperity, want to nationalize all wealth and property. Unfortunately, the communists do not know how to solve the problem of wealth and its distribution. Consequently, when the wealth of the capitalists falls into the hands of the communists, no solution results. Opposed to these two philosophies, the Krishna conscious ide ideology states that all wealth belongs to Krishna. Thus, unless all wealth comes under the administration of Krishna, there can be no solution to the economic problem of mankind. Nothing can be solved by placing wealth in the hands of the communist or the capitalist. If a hundred dollar bill is lying in the street. Someone may pick it up and put it in his pocket. Such a man is not honest. Another man may see the money and decide to let it remain there, thinking that he should not touch another's property. Although the second man does not steal the money for his own purpose, he is unaware of the proper use. The third man who sees the $100 bill may pick it up, find the man who lost it, and deliver it to him. 
This man does not steal the money to spend for himself, nor does he neglect it and let it lay in the street. By taking it and delivering it to the man who has lost it, this man is both honest and wise. So Prabhupada, in Prabhupada's time, of course, there was, the, there was this friction, there was the worry that there's going to be war between America and Russia, because at that time Russia was pushing the communist philosophy, and of course America is totally against communism, they are very capitalistic. So Prabhupada explains to us that both of these philosophies are hopeless. They don't solve the problem of the world. They don't know how to distribute the wealth. In the capitalist society, they say, you work hard, you make the money, right? They, but if so many people are working hard, they're not rich. So many people work hard, doesn't mean they get money. Capitalist society is all based on doing business. Who is the biggest liar and cheater? It makes the most money. If you're good at lying and cheating, you'll be very successful in business. If you're honest, you'll be a failure. And then the communists, they have the idea that all, everything belongs to the state. Everything belongs to the nation. So nobody owns any land. Prabhupada went to Russia and he saw in Russia one man was sweeping the street and the other man was riding in the car. So they say, the communist philosophy said, all people are equal. So, is it true everyone's equal in the communist countries? One man is sweeping the street and the other man's riding in the car. Are they equal? No, they're not equal. They talk about equality, but there's no equality. It's not true. Bogus. The people, some, some people make a lot of money, and some people very poor. So the, the communism, it, it, it doesn't work. It, 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 they talk about being equal, equal but it, it, it doesn't happen. People take advantage of their position also. When I first went to China, I first went to China like more than 30 years ago. So at that time, everybody was on a bicycle. Everyone, you know, you go in the morning and the, and the, the whole street is covered with bicycles, you know. Everyone was on the bicycle. The manager of the factory also rode a bicycle. The workers also rode a bicycle. That was... 30 years ago or more. It was like that. But now, it's not like that. Now you don't see like, now there's so many cars, so many big changes. Some people have a lot of money and some people are poor. So, it, it, their idea of equal distribution of wealth, it doesn't work. It doesn't happen. Because people are greedy. People want to take advantage. They think, I should have more. And they will do things to get more, to get more money for their own self. So Prabhupada gives that nice example. You see the money laying in the street? D devotee will take it, right? The devotee finds a hundred dollar in the street, will take it and bring it and put it in the box, right? Give it to Radha Madhava. We know they're the proprietor. All the money belongs to them. 
So if you find the money, you bring it and put it in the box there. It goes for them. That is proper. That is honest. But if we take it, put it in our own pocket, that is the karmi. And if you leave it there, you say, oh, money, don't touch it. Just like the famous sadhu from Bengal, he had a picture taken, money on the table, and he's going. And people thought, oh, he's a great sadhu. He does not touch money. Is he a great sadhu because he doesn't touch money? Prabhupada said, they can give the money to me. I can count it better than even the bank teller. And I will spend it all for Krishna. So that is that. Prabhupada said, that man who had the picture with the money on the table, he said, he didn't touch the money on the table, but below the table he had a lot of money. Underneath the table, all the black money. So, like this, people talk, but they don't act properly. They have their philosophies, they don't live their philosophy. Krishna consciousness, we not only speak, but we also act according to the message. We don't just read the Bhagavad Gita, but we live by the Bhagavad Gita. So we want to tell people like that when we present the Bhagavad Gita, that this is a book to teach you how to live, how to live your life properly so you can be happy and satisfied and how you can achieve success in life. Okay, so Prabhupada continues. Simply transferring wealth from capitalist to communist cannot solve the problem of modern politics. For it has been demonstrated that when a communist gets money, he uses it for his own sense gratification. The wealth of the world actually belongs to Krishna. And every living entity, man and animal, has a birthright to use God's property for his maintenance. When one takes more than his maintenance requires, then he is a capitalist. Or be he a capitalist or a communist, he is a thief. And as, as such, he is liable to be punished by the laws of nature. Prabhupada was in Mayapur. And he met this, this one man, he was a life member. So Prabhupada would sometimes talk to them and ask them, what is your business? And then this one man, he told Prabhupada, he said, I have a glass factory, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, oh, glass factory. He said, how do you make the glass? And the man said, well, you get sand and you heat the sand up and melt the sand, it, it becomes glass, silicone, you make, this would make glass. And Prabhupada said, where do you get the sand from? Who gives you the sand? And the man said, well, we have a, we have a quarry, we have a sand mine there. The land is which where the factory is, there's a lot of sand, we use that sand. But Prabhupada said, yes, but whose sand is it? And so then the man understood Prabhupada's point. He said, well, everything belongs to Krishna. And Prabhupada said, oh, you're taking the sand that belongs to Krishna? And Prabhupada turned to one devotee there. There was one devotee, it was actually Swarup Damodar uh, from Manipur. You know Swarup Damodar? He became Swarup Damodar Goswami. So Swarup Damodar, Prabhupada said to him, he said, he's taking the sand that belongs to Krishna. And Swarup Damodar said, He's a thief, Prabhupada. He's taking what belongs to Krishna. He must be a thief. So Prabhupada looked at the man and said, He says you're a thief. <laughs> and the man said, but he said, the man said to Prabhupada, but I also give donations to Krishna. He said to Prabhupada, he said, I also give donations to Krishna. 
So Prabhupada said, then you are just a little thief. <laughs> Another time, Prabhupada was on morning walk with the devotees. This was in USA. So they were walking in the park and they could see this big house at the side of the park. Very big house. And they were telling Prabhupada that the man who lives in that house, he's one of the richest men in the world. He owns oil fields. He's mining oil and he's selling petrol. He's, he's got that business. He's made all his money from mining the oil out of the ground and making petrol, selling it. And they said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, we, want to, we were planning to go to preach to that man. So Prabhupada said, oh, really? You're going to preach to him? What are you going to tell him? How are you going to preach to him? Right? What are you going to say to him? Right? What will you say? Prabhu, hey, what are you going to say? You're going to preach to this man. He's one of the richest men in the world. All his money came from oil. So we want to preach to him. So what are we, how will we preach to him? Do you think he'll believe you? Now, different devotees had different ideas how we should preach to him. One devotee said, I tell him he's not the body. I said, yeah, do you think he'll believe that? You know? And the other devotee said, uh, everything belongs, like Prabhu here said, everything belongs to Krishna. So, then Prabhupada said, you should tell him he is a thief. <laughs> and at the time of death, he will be punished for having stolen everything from all his money. It was all stolen from Krishna. So like that Prabhupada saying the same thing here. People are, so many people, they're just thieves. We're stealing what does not belong to us. We take more than is necessary for our own self. Right? You have to take your quota. How do you know what your quota is? How will you know? Whatever you require for your maintenance, right? Yes. But people will say, you know, just like I was telling you, the, a woman, average woman, must have 30 saris. No, if she only has two or three saris, you know, then she'll say, you know, I, I should have 30 saris, not two or three. Is that right for her maintenance? Does she need so many saris? The average woman will say yes. I need. We may say we're men. And they will say, oh. I only have two dories. I, I have three dories. What's the difference? Why you need 30? So maintenance, how much we need to maintain, just like when it comes to eating, how much do we need to eat and how much do we eat? Hmm? Sometimes we eat more than necessary. How much do we need to sleep? And how much do we sleep? So what is necessary for our maintenance? Do we actually need all of these things which we have? We have to try to minimize. Of course, we cannot be like, you know, Gorkisho does Babaji. You cannot be like Raghunath Das, but at the same time, we try to be conscious, try to minimize. Don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. Be regulated. Don't be greedy to acquire 
more and more things unnecessarily. So Prabhupada says, the wealth of the world should be used for the welfare of all living entities. For that is the plan of Mother Nature. Everyone has the right to live by utilizing the wealth of the Lord. When people learn the art of scientifically utilizing the Lord's property, they will, not, they will no longer encroach upon one another's rights. Then an ideal society can be formed. The basic principle for such a spiritual society is stated in the first mantra of Sri Ishopanishad. Everyone chant, Etavatsyam. Right? Who knows the translation? Yes? Who knows the translation? Anybody? Translation? Yes, you know the translation? Everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota, and should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. Right? So the idea, everything belongs to Krishna. Recognizing Krishna is the... Pr Prabhupada said, if we work, if we live according to that principle, if we minimize, there will be no problems. Just like this war, Russia and Ukraine. The problem was, they, they've got too much. <laughs> they've got too much. And, and that causes the, the, the friction, the tension between the two nations. One nation is trying to advance more than the other. That's a problem. One nation, they don't want you to advance more than the other. And so then they, there's a fight, there's a war. One nation is becoming more powerful than the other. There's a war. And so all of, when people minimize everything, when you keep it very simple, there's no wars. People will live peacefully and happily. But because they're trying to progress in the name of their material advancement, that's why there's war, why there's conflict, tension. Krishna conscious devotees know very well that this material world is designated by the complete arrangement of the Lord to fulfill all the necessities of life for all living beings without their having to encroach upon the life or rights of one another. This complete arrangement affords the proper quota of wealth for everyone according to his real needs. And thus everyone may live peacefully according to the principle, plain living and high thinking. Unfortunately, materialists who have neither faith in the plan of God nor any aspiration for higher spiritual development misuse their God-given intelligence only to augment their material possessions. They devise many systems such as capitalism and materialistic communism to advance their material position. They are not interested in the laws of God or in a higher goal. Always anxious to fulfill their unlimited desires for sense gratification. They are 
conspicuous by their ability to exploit their fellow living beings. Exploitation of others, that, is, that goes on all over the world. We exploit each other. We think this world is for my enjoyment and we will try to take advantage of the other person. Just like I said, you do business, you have to be good at lying and cheating. <laughs> Prabhupada said the only two classes of people, the cheaters and the cheated. We go shopping, you get cheated. <laughs> you go out in the world, deal. it's a harsh, cruel world. Actually, every, it's a struggle for existence and the survival of the fittest. And who is the fittest person? The one who can be the biggest cheater, <laughs> the biggest rascal. He survives. So everyone is thinking how to improve their economic condition, how to have more material facilities. And this this is the problem, this creates a conflict between people. Because there's no center, there's no common center. Just like if you take a handful of pebbles and you throw pebbles into the water, then each pebble will produce ripples. From each pebble so many ripples will come and the ripples will all cross over each other. But if you take one stone, one big stone, and throw it, then the ripples all come out from the one point. So Krishna consciousness is like that. There's one center, Ishyavashyam, the Ishyavashya society with God in the center. So there's no conflict. But if everyone develops their own interest, then that's a problem. So long as we're all focused on Krishna, we have the common center and everything is nice and in harmony. But if we become selfish, if we're thinking about our own self, what am I getting? Then that's a problem. Just like when Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati got the new temple at Bhag Bazaar, I was reading this temple at Bug Bazaar was built by one devotee for them. So when they got the new temple, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was disappointed because he heard the devotees arguing with each other. I will have this room. This room will be my room. That room, you can have that room. And like this, they were all planned. They were not planning how we will preach there, but they were just planning how we will live comfortably there. So, temple is the base. Prabhupada used to tell us, he said, the temple is the base for our army to go out and fight Maya. We go out to fight Maya. It's not a place for our eating and sleeping, but it's a base for us to go out and fight Maya. So, so long as we keep that consciousness, that consciousness then there will be harmony and everything will be nice and successful and grow. But if we deviate from that and if we become selfish and think about my own, what am I getting, then that will create problems. So we have to always be on guard against that materialistic conception. When human society gives up these elemental, elementary faults enumerated by Srila Rupa Goswami, what are these faults? What were these faults enumerated by Rupa Goswami? Yes, very good. So then all, when we give up these faults, all Enmity will cease between men and animals, capitalists and communists, and so forth. In addition, 
all problems of economic or political maladjustment and instability will be solved. The pure consciousness is awakened by the proper spiritual education and practice offered scientifically by the Krishna consciousness movement. So when people actually see how our Krishna consciousness movement is doing everything to try to help people, then they will have respect for this Krishna consciousness movement. And you can see how it's actually working like that. You know, in, in Australia, in the beginning, when the devotees were there in Australia, they, it was very difficult for them. Uh, they used to get arrested regularly. And they would get arrested and taken to court and fined. And Prabhupada said, don't pay the fine. <laughs> so they didn't pay the fine. They got put in prison for some time, for a week or something like that, you know. But Prabhupada said, don't pay the fine. He said, don't. Do so when Prabhupada came there, the reporters asked him, he said, your devotees seem to be having a difficult time. And Prabhupada said, well, they haven't crucified us yet. You know, crucifixion. <laughs> they didn't crucify us. They didn't nail any of us on the cross yet. <laughs> anyway, the devote, it was like that in the beginning, but gradually, gradually, devotees kept preaching. They kept preaching. And they did a lot of nice programs, and they distributed a lot of prasadam. And you know, now in Australia, people all love the devotees. The devotees are, you know, they have nice relationships with everyone. And they respect Krishna consciousness movement, because they see we're doing a lot. We have programs for students, special meals for the students. Because sometimes the students, you know, they don't get proper food. So they have a, like what's ever left at the Govinda restaurant every day. They have a special supper, student supper. And they can come at night and for a very small amount, they get supper from the restaurant. So things like that, prasadam distribution and generally helping out wherever there's a need. And people appreciate Krishna consciousness. And so it changes. And similarly in the UK, in London, we used to also get so much harassment. People, you know, the police, for example, they didn't like us to do Harinam, Sankirtan. And often they'd come, they arrest everybody. We all had to go to the police station. And, but then we, we found out you know, gradually, just working with them. We tell the police, we're having a procession today. <laughs> you know, Harinam Sankirtan. And we get official permission to do Sankirtan gradually. And, you know, now the police have very nice relationships with our Krishna consciousness movement. And so, in the beginning, there's opposition. You have to, Prabhupada said, in the beginning, they will laugh at you. And then after some time, they will hate you. And then finally, they will join you. <laughs> so, it gets like that, you know? This is the, what, the way the material world works. So, the people who are hating us in the future, they will become our supporter. Just one paragraph remaining. This Krishna consciousness movement offers a spiritual community that can bring about a peaceful condition in the world. Every intelligent man should purify his consciousness and rid himself of the above mentioned six hindrances to devotional service by taking wholehearted shelter of this Krishna consciousness movement. So we have these problems. We, are, we, have the, we get entangled in these kind of things. 
nonsense talking, over collecting, or sometimes too much attached to the rules and regulation, but just absorb ourselves in service, take up some service, become active in hearing and chanting and serving. And gradually all of these obstacles, all of these entanglements will all be removed. Everything will be removed. We just have to absorb ourselves in consciousness of Krishna. Hearing. How to get free of the attachment. You know, I told the story about the Buddhist monk, the Buddhist guy who had a a Buddhist master, and he came to his Buddhist master and he asked him, how can, how can I get free of my attachments? So the Buddhist master said, just wait, after some time I will tell you. So after some time, he heard his Buddhist master calling out, help, save me, help, save me, let me go, help. So the man heard his master calling out. He went running and he found his master. He was holding a tree. He was holding a tree. He was shouting, help, let me go, let me go. And the student came to his master and said, master, what is wrong? He said, I want to let go. I want to get free. And the student said to his master, but you're holding, you're holding on to the tree. You just have to let go. And so then the master let go and he turned to his student and he said, Yes, now do you understand? You want to get free of material attachment. You just have to let go. Buddhists, they, because Buddhists, the world is nothing. Nothing is real, right? So they let go. They, no, don't see anything, don't hear anything, don't speak anything. That's the Buddhist idea. Our idea is not like that. Our idea is hold on to Krishna. Speak about Krishna. See Krishna and hear about Krishna. We don't just let go of everything. We turn to Krishna and we take full shelter of Krishna. The Krishna conscious process, bhakti yoga, and it solves all the problems. Even somebody, you know, you get sometimes people come, you know, maybe they have a child who has like a Down syndrome, you know, but mentally retarded, you know, they're, they're not normal, and they come, come to the temple, and, and just because they're in the temple, although they're not able to do very much because of the mental deficiency, but just because they're there in the temple, in the sanctified atmosphere, that gradually, gradually you can see them changing and becoming more peaceful and calm. Initially they're very, you know, emotional, but gradually they just settle down and they just understand, they're happy. So it, this Krishna consciousness process can help everyone in every situation. It's the solution to all the problems. Prabhupada went to uh, Bombay in 1977 and they arranged a Pandal program and the title was, There is no scarcity in the world except Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada spoke about how Krishna consciousness is the one thing which can save the world from going to hell. And so we can see the situation, how the world is not in a very pleasant situation. There's so much tension between one nation and another. Even in one nation, you get tension. One community wants to get independence from the other, from the, like that. You get these problems. Everyone's thinking, I'm the body. 
They're ident identifying with the body. They have not come to the proper consciousness to understand their actual spiritual position. So we have to try to give this Krishna consciousness. It's the greatest gift for humanity. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, like, who are initiated devotees, actually, they sending their children to abroad for job or for earning some money. So why like that? They're why it's happening? Sending their children abroad. Ah, initiated devotees also. Even they know everything. So again, they're sending their kids. They're not engaging their kids into Krishna consciousness full time. Why not like that? Well, I'm trying. I'm preaching to them. I'm telling them why you send them there. <laughs> send them there to become bigger animal. This is their stupidity. You know, they're devotee to some extent. <laughs> but when it comes to the children, oh no, they have to get education. They have to go there. No. They want, you know, the, child, the, the child wants. The, they want to go to college, they want this education. I've told them that, you know, that it's stupid, especially, I was just telling one man, he had daughters, and I said, you send your daughter there, she's going to get married. I said, what's the point? Why you waste so much money? You send her all the way there to study there for so many years, and she's going to get married, and have, she's not going to work, she's not going to practice. Just why you bother? No, she wants it. She wants it. She has to. Yeah. They want so many things. Children want so many. You're the father. You're supposed to tell them. You're supposed to arrange for them. Anyway, we try to preach to these people. It's, it's, it's not easy, though, to be a parent either. The, pro, the problem, you know, being a parent to bring your children up to be devotees is one of the most difficult things. It's very, very difficult to get your children to want to be devotees. Especially if you put them in government schools and so on. They go through government schools, so they have a lot of association with non-devotees. So they get influenced in that way. But if, if you put them in in the devotee school, then it's a little bit. But the, the problem is often they go to the devotee school, well, they don't like to stay there in the devotee school. After some time, they, I want to go back to the government, the other school. If they've, already, if, if they've been in the devotee school from the beginning, then it's okay. But if they've had a taste, if they've come from the government school, and then they go to the Krishna conscious school, then after some time they think they want to go back to the government, to the old thing. They don't see so much future in being a devotee. They think, I have more future if I will become a software engineer. I will become a computer programmer. I will have more future. They're thinking like that. So that's the illusion. The illusion is, you know, I, I, will, I will find a nice job in the multinational company and I'll sit in the air-conditioned office and then work. I met one boy, I was in Calcutta and I asked him, who are you working for? He said, oh, I work for Intel. I said, oh, really? I said, you work for Intel? I said, I know. They call you up in the middle of the night. You work for this company, they can, you're on call 24 hours a day. Any time, the day and night, they can call you. You cannot even take a proper night's rest. You have to have your computer always on, your phone always on. Any time, they'll call you. If there's anything wrong, they'll call you. You have to immediately go there and do something. That's, that's their life. That's one company like that. And 
and it's also very insecure. You don't know any moment the whole economy is going to change and the, the company is going to download. You know, we're going to divert. We're not going. Now you have so many software companies in India. Before, they were in other places. Now they're in India. Does it mean they're going to remain in India? After any, any time, they can just close down, we're moving. We, there used to be so many factories in Hong Kong. Now there are no factories in Hong Kong. Everything moved to mainland China. Everything moved to mainland China. So there was n there's no more factories in Hong Kong. They used to make everything in Hong Kong. Now nothing is made in Hong Kong. It's all made in China. The, the market changes. The whole people were doing the printing industry. The printing industry, they had letter press. Prabhupada printed the Bhagavatam, letter press. But then they came along with computer programmers and typesetting and every and it's all done totally different. The newspapers, how they print the newspapers now is totally different from how they printed them 20 years ago. So people who learned the business 20 years ago, they're out of work. And the same way, so many people are computer programmers today in another 20 years. The whole industry will change. They will all be out of work. They won't have any future. People don't think about these things. But this is the way. This is what happens in the world. The economy, the whole nature of business, it's very unpredictable. And things change. What is... What people need today, oh, there's a big need for computer programmers. If you're a computer programmer, you can get a job, a good But in 10 years' time, they won't need any, there will be no demand, there will be no more. It will be difficult to find a job. That's a fact. But if you're a devotee of Krishna, chanting Hare Krishna, worshipping Krishna, no problem. So we have the best occupation. You go to college, they send their children to school, spend so much money, they have to learn all these useless things. I studied at university, I studied at university, I know everything I learned is useless. It's all out of date, practically. But Krishna conscious knowledge, that is eternal knowledge, eternal benefit. Good in this life and good for the next life, good for the future. We say, Raja Putra Chan Charanjiva Ma jiva rishi putraka, jiva va maravasado vyadi ma jiva mamara. You know that story? Jiva Goswami tells that story. This purport in one of his purports. So uh, that the king's son can live forever, should live forever. Don't die, because when he dies, he'll go to hell. <laughs> because he's a sinful rascal. So, Raja Putra Charanjiva, Ma Jiva Rishi Putraka, the Rishi's son, may your death come soon, you get a very good birth because you're doing so much austerity. Jiva Va Maravasado, for the sadhu, it doesn't matter if you live or if you die. Because the sadhu is serving Krishna here, and when he dies, he'll go to serve Krishna in the next life also. But vyadi ma jiva mamara, the butcher, the hunter, don't live and don't die. He's living in hell, 
And when he dies, he will go to hell. So who is best off? The sadhu, right? The sadhu is best off. We are the best off. We have the best. Okay. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna.